Well, we're going to talk about free peas, so we're talking about another free peas uh, uh, this, uh, this evening. We started off with free peas this morning, and they were peace, proof, and pleasure. And that pleasure one was a bit iffy, but uh, the next three Ps are promotion, partnership, and privilege. And we have been thinking, uh, by way of uh, introduction uh, this evening, of what we think we've thought about this morning. We were thinking about those wonderful resurrection appearances of our Lord Jesus uh, to the disciples in the upper room. And uh, we've been reading about them on two occasions, of course. There was that one occasion, uh, very, on the same day in which our Lord Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. Uh, but sadly, one of the disciples, Thomas, wasn't there. And the Lord Jesus came back eight days later. And uh, you remember that wonderful uh, uh, event in which the Lord told Thomas to, put his, uh, to see his, the wounds of his hands and to put his hand in his side. And, and Thomas made, declared his faith, didn't he? Um, my Lord and my God. Well, we're going to be thinking uh, uh, this, this evening about th those other three Ps that we, we mentioned just now that are part of the title. And the first of those is promotion. Promotion. And uh, there we go to verse 21. Actually, if I just move this on a bit. Uh, there we are. Uh, John 20, verse 21. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also sent. Uh, I also send you. Now, the di disciples at this point, on this uh, Sunday, uh, first Sunday uh, of the Resurrection Sunday, the di disciples are to have promotion. Uh, before the death, and then now the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were the pupils, the students of the great master. They were, the, they were the, the pupils of the rabbi. But now they're going to be something else. They're going to be apostles. And uh, we see that in, that in our text. Uh, Jesus says to them, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. The disciples and now to become apostles. And that means that they are to be teachers. They are to be proclaimers of a message because the, the, the name apostle means, uh, in the Greek, literally, one who is sent with a message. And that's what the disciples were. They were now going, out, going to, out into the world, out into, as we read in Acts chapter 1, they were to start in Jerusalem, uh, to Judea, Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth with that message. But what's the message? Well, I'm not sure if we're going to get the right verse up at this point, but I, I know I can give you the text. It's Acts chapter uh, 4 and verse 12, and those aren't the words of that, ver of that, 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 that text. Uh, the words are actually that nor is there any salvation that nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That's Acts chapter 4, verse 12, not what you see on the screen there. But the, po the point is, this is from Peter. This is early on in the, uh, the time of the, uh, the early church, uh, just a few weeks after, uh, or perhaps only a few days perhaps, after Pentecost. And this is what the disciples were to, to go and tell. There is no other way of going to heaven except through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus himself said, didn't he? In John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except uh, through me. It is Jesus who died for our sins. It is Jesus who paid the price for our sins. And the proof that our sins are paid for, the proof that heaven is open to us who believe is that he is risen from the dead. And now he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And just as Jesus had promised, so it was all being fulfilled when he rose from the dead. 
Remember in John chapter 14, as they were in the upper room and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was preparing his disciples for the fact that he was to be arrested and he was to die and he tells them of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he tells them there that they should not be uh, troubled in heart because he's going to go away uh, to prepare a place for them. Uh, in his father's house, there were many mansions, many rooms, and he was going to prepare a place for them, and then he would receive them to himself. Now, that's only possible because Jesus has died, and Jesus is risen, and of course, what we'll discover in a few weeks' time, that he has ascended into heaven. And so he's fulfilling his promises. And yet what Jesus says to his disciples, he is also saying to us who believe and trust in him. So when Jesus says to his now apostles, as the Father has sent me, I also send you, he's saying that to us. He's saying that to all the generations of Christians from the times of the apostles to our present day. This is not just a word for the disciples, it is a word uh, to us all who believe. And we're to go into the world with the gospel. We are to go with that message that Jesus saves, that Jesus is the only saviour, the only way of salvation to heaven. And in uh, Matthew 28 and verse 19, another uh, saying of Jesus, uh, uh, the, resur the resurrected Jesus, he said this to the, his disciples, go therefore uh, and make disciples of all, of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That is what we are supposed to be doing. Now, as believers in Jesus, we, we sometimes like to think that, uh, that uh, there are certain believers who have a special calling. Uh, to go and do this work of going and telling and sharing the gospel. Uh, that a pastor has to have a special calling to be a preacher of the gospel. Or that uh, uh, if you, uh, uh, a person might be uh, a Bible college lecturer who's uh, got a special calling to train uh, people to be uh, preachers and missionaries. Or a missionary has a special calling uh, to go to a certain people group in a distant land. But the real truth is this. We all have a calling. If we are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we all have a calling to go and tell the message. To go into our little world and to be his messengers. To be his apostles with a little a. To go to our streets and to our families and to our work colleagues. To live out our Christian life before them and to speak uh, about the gospel to them. But you know there's a big problem about that. The big problem is this. We can't do it. We can't do it. At least ways, we can't do it alone. We need help. And that brings us to the second point. And the second P is partnership. Partnership. And if we go to verse 22 now in John chapter 20 and verse 22, we see the partnership. This is what Jesus says. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. We can't do the work of being messengers for Jesus, of declaring the good news about Jesus, the way of salvation, unless we are in partnership with God, and especially unless we are in partnership with God, the Holy Spirit. We are co-workers with God. If we are truly believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we are true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit in us and with us, and the Holy Spirit wants to promote Jesus. He wants to proclaim Jesus to the world. Uh, let's just hear what Jesus had to say uh, uh, again in the upper room, but before his arrest and before his death. John 16, verse 13 to 15. And Jesus speaks to his uh, disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit, who is to 
uh, was to come alongside them, is to be with them, and to empower them to be uh, the, the people that they should be for Jesus. And so Jesus says in John 16, verse 13, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, and he will take a what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it uh, to you. There are some jobs, and we're talking in terms of secular things, which can't be done without help. Um, one of my uh, lasting memories of my, my father when I was in my late teens was that uh, we had uh, in, uh, outside of the house two concrete coal bunkers. And my, my dad said that he wanted to get rid of these concrete co uh, coal bunkers. He would dismantle them and he'd get rid of them. And he went out, uh, I don't know, he had his, his tools with him, he went out, and after about half an hour, we thought we haven't heard much about what was going on here, and I went out to see what had, what had happened, and, and he was pinned down by these concrete blocks, and he couldn't move. He thought he could do it by himself. He thought he was going to be strong enough and had the right tools to do it, and so I had to come, and we together we managed to get the blocks moved so that... Uh, he could escape, and we were able to, to, to take him away in the end. But he needed somebody to do the job with him. And that is true for the church. That is the true, uh, that's true for individual believers. We need someone to work with us. And the one who works with us is God, uh, the Holy Spirit. There are many things that the Lord God would have us do. He would have us to be more holy. Uh, God says in the scriptures, be holy for I am holy. He would want us to be more loving. He would want us to have more faith. He would want us to be able to share the gospel in, in a better way. But we can't do any of those things without the help of the Holy Spirit. And there's a partnership for the believer and with the Holy Spirit. And perhaps it's better to say that this partnership between the Holy Spirit and God's people is a kind of junior partnership. It's, it's the Holy Spirit who's the senior partner. We're just the instruments. We're just the instruments in his hands. It's a great privilege for God to want to use us. You know, we sometimes refer to ourselves as sinners saved by grace. And that God would want to use such frail, weak vessels as ourselves for his kingdom. But it's God, the Holy Spirit, that's in us. It's God, the Holy Spirit, who is uh, the senior partner. We're just the junior workers in the proclamation of the gospel, in the declaring of, of Jesus as the Son of God uh, and Savior of all who believe. Well, there's two Ps we've done. So we've done a uh, partnership just now. And uh, see, I've got short-term memory loss. Promotion with the first one. The third one is that of privilege. And we, we mentioned the word privilege just now, didn't we? So let's go to uh, pr uh, privilege and to verse 23. Uh, privilege. And there in verse 23, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, this is, I would confess to you, a very difficult verse to get your heads around. And if I'll tell you what it isn't. It isn't uh, a mandate that says you have to run into some confession box with some priest and you confess your sins and he will be able to forgive you your sins. It's not saying that. It's... Uh, it's not saying uh, that a church uh, can excommunicate any of its wayward members. And it's not saying that some pastor has some special uh, gifting. 
uh, to forgive the sins of, uh, of other people. But at very least, what it is saying is this, that sins are forgiven. All our sins are forgiven in Christ Jesus. The past sins, the present sins, the sins of the future. And they all are forgiven by the precious blood of Jesus Christ when he died upon that cross. And it is applied to those who believe in him, who trust in Jesus, who have Jesus as their Savior and their Lord. But what's the privilege? It's this. It's the privilege of having our sins forgiven. It's the privilege of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the privilege of being entrusted by God to be his servants. It's the privilege of being able to go and tell the world that there is salvation for all doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what race, doesn't matter what language, doesn't matter what culture, that is salvation to all who believe in Jesus. There is no other name under heaven given to men, given to men and women, by which we must be saved, other than the name of Jesus. And the reason why that is true is because Jesus died on a cross, was placed in a tomb, he rose from the dead, he has ascended into heaven, and he's going to come again. The empty tomb, the risen Savior, is the proof that what Jesus said is real, that there is no salvation in any other save the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you again for the importance of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And we ask your forgiveness, Lord, at times that we so often forget. And we don't often mention uh, that we worship a risen Savior. Uh, we have a living Lord. And we have a Lord who's going to come again. We pray, Father, that, that, uh, that reality, that sense of reality of the fact that Jesus lives uh, and is coming again will be something that will be burning in our hearts and in our minds and motivating us, moving us uh, to go and make the good news known uh, in our world, amongst our neighbors, our families, our friends, those we work with that we might be sent, just as Jesus said to his disciples, that they were going to be sent, that we might know ourselves to be the sent ones because we have a message that the world needs to hear. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.